Welcome to another exciting Paranormal Highway. Today, we're going to be doing the interview in the paranormal about a haunted house with two guests from Casual Conversation with GNA. They're going to be talking to us about their haunted house experience. I am so curious about this story because if you're new here, I don't want to know anything about the story. So when we hear this story, it's for the first time. It's raw, it's real. So what happens is, is I'm gonna bring them up by themselves. They're gonna tell us their story about the haunted house. I'm be taking notes. And then when they're done, myself and Anthony of, of Unidentified S4 is gonna come up and we're gonna ask them questions based on the story they just told us. Nothing else but that story. And then I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. Because I'm so curious. We have all lived in houses where we're wondering, is it haunted? Is it not? Or when you hear haunted stories, what do we look for? What do we know? How do we know what's true and what's not? And what's involved in a haunted house? Is it a scary haunted house? Is it a friendly haunted house? These are the things that I want to know about. You know, maybe we'll get answers. Or maybe we'll just have to have the mystery continue. Because I believe there is life after death. So these stories, will that give me the answers that I'm looking for? I don't know. I truly don't know. But I'm so excited and curious to hear their story about the haunted house. Because I don't even know where we're going into the story. Is it scary or not? I don't know. That's what's exciting about this. So I'm going to bring up the guests by themselves and they're going to tell us their haunted house story. I'm going to bring myself down. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we're going to start sharing our story. Um, it takes us back years. Um, mm -hmm. She, how old were you? Um, when the initial, we, I was I think, a toddler. Yeah, we moved into this house when she was a toddler. I remember I was like, I want to say maybe like eight years old. Um, so this house, I think, was built around the 1950s. <clears throat> and it was in L.A. And um, at first, I think right after we moved in, we started having activity. Our family started having activity and they would talk about it and share it amongst themselves. They didn't want to scare us, so they wouldn't tell the kids about what was going mm -hmm. on. Um, but eventually they got to the point where they, um, we found out what was happening. Um, and it started with uh, shadows, right? We would have little shadows of like what I know about. It was a shadow of a child um, that they would see often. Um, so Eileen, you want to share? Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, as a toddler, I would kind of like see things. So some of the things I remember um, was me when I went into one of the bedrooms, I, rem I remember that I was scared and I didn't want to be there because I had seen a little boy that was in that room. And he was, I believe he was jumping on the bed and he was inviting me in and I just, you know, slammed the door on him. And I don't, I don't remember if it was my mom or my sisters who, you know, they just asked me like, Hey, what's wrong? And I was like, there's a boy in there and he's wanting me to play with him and I don't want to play with him. And, you know, they opened it. There was no one there. Right. Yeah. And I was there when you said that, um, she just said, I, we kind of brushed it off. She said, oh, there's a kid there and I don't want to play with him. And so we brushed it off. We were like, oh, she's we don't know what she's talking about. But then it kind of clicked and we're like, what? What did you say? And she said, there's a boy there. And we kind of opened the door and she pointed and there was nothing there. Um, but we would also sometimes catch her like talking to somebody. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> but and but we just thought it was her imagination, um, you know, like... You know, the age where you have imaginary friends. Yeah. And so um, there was an instance where somebody saw something move. You want to talk about that? Where they saw something move? The vase. Oh, yes, yes. I was going to get to that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had my babysitter 
and well there was actually two of them so when they were there you know I, I was on I was playing on the ground I was a toddler so they said that they were chatting amongst each other and they just saw like one of our vases lift up in midair like literally like just in midair there was nothing under it and they both saw it at the same time and it just dropped and broke right but they yes. both saw it in midair and they just you know they ran off and they left me there because <laughs> you know when you're scared that's what you do you know yeah <laughs> you just take off but um you know luckily it came back for me and took me but that was another experience and then you know because we lived in this home for quite some time yeah for a lot of years so you know as i grew like i felt like the activity was different um so when i was a little older i remember i was in the bathroom and i was trying to get out and someone was pulling the door so that i couldn't get out and I thought it was my sister and I, I just said, hey, stop playing, you know, like I want to get out, like I'm scared. And she wouldn't open the door, you know, so I I really just like pulled it to find that there was no one on the other side. And yeah, and I looked around and there was there was no one. So that was mind boggling because it's like, how do you make sense of that? You know, the, clearly there was someone doing this yeah and, then and you don't see anyone yeah and that's something too that um i remember that you would be afraid of going into that bathroom yeah. and you would be like i don't want to go there uh, i'm scared and not only that because that bathroom was kind of in a weird little area mm -hmm. um and also there was like steps like to go into another bedroom yeah. from there and people would always get hurt on those steps yeah. and right in front of that bathroom there was always like i got hurt there really bad my mom uh, my dad like everybody yes. um mm -hmm. so and at that time they would always tell us too that they would hear like dishes somebody washing dishes in the middle of the night they would hear like movement walking footsteps our older sister would actually hear people talking like little mm -hmm. kids and she I, said i have like a story on that okay i'm going to share it um so yeah my sister had the room closest to that bathroom and closest to the kitchen where all the you know commotion happens and she said one night she heard a child laughing outside and just she just kind of heard them like laughing and running like you know giggling that stuff and she thought it was me she opened the door it was dark all the lights were off and she just saw like a silhouette just to run past her run right past her and since this house was a duplex um the steps connected to the other home so that's like those steps is kind of where like that action would happen a lot so she said that she saw the silhouette run past her bedroom into the other home and she just heard them fall and she thought it was me and she kept you know like saying hey Eileen is that you but she wouldn't get a response because that wasn't me because I was sleeping yeah so that was strange yeah and so um I feel like uh, even like the neighbors would say things, stories yeah. about our house that um, somebody had died there, a child had died there, and they buried it somewhere in the house mm -hmm. or outside. We they didn't, we didn't believe it. My parents didn't believe it because they said, you know, like that's a big deal. Like, yeah, that's why would you a big accusation? Yeah, and so they were for a long time. They were like, no, this is not happening. Like, it's not. Um, real you guys are just making things up but you know in the neighborhood that we lived in there was a lot of crime there was yeah, a there lot was. of um people would get killed out there mm -hmm. um you know gang related and there was also there's always accidents sirens. yeah and and you would think it's a little street it wasn't mm -hmm. like a big it, yeah road but there was always like things happening in the corner of where we lived because we were like in a corner of two streets yeah. And so there was always things happening and um, my parents were just like, you know, it's just a bad neighborhood, you know, yeah. we, we need to eventually like try to find somewhere else to go. Um, but I think that if we fast forward, mm -hmm. um, the scariest thing that happened, I think in that home um, was around the time when um, the Chupacabra was trending. Big. Yeah, it was like a big thing in the media and the news. 
they would talk about this creature that looked like a dog, right? A mangy dog that was gl that had glowing eyes and he would um, suck the blood out of animals. And people would find animals with like perforations, right? On their mm -hmm. neck and um, no, no signs of blood. And so around that time, I remember one night uh, my dad was hanging out with family. We were having like a get together and they decided to joke around, play around, you know, talk about the chupacabra and just make fun of it. Like, and my dad decided to draw because my dad's and he's always been an artist. He's a very good drawer. And so he decided to draw it and he drew this kind of like, what did it look like to you? Do you remember the picture? Mm. It was like an iguana. <laughs> But it was like standing on like two legs and kind of like a little mini dinosaur, but it looked like creepy with like, and he had like a straw in its hand and blood leaking out of it. And he was passing it around the house and his friends and our family were just laughing at it. And um, he put it on the fridge and he just left it there. <laughs> and so I remember um, around that time uh, we had bunnies, we had rabbits yeah. bunnies we had um chickens did we have a dog at that time i don't think we had I a don't dog think so we didn't have a dog um but my dad was a welder his whole life so he would build these stainless steel cages um that were hard they, they, it was hard for us to yeah open we them. couldn't open them yeah because one of them the bunny cage you would have to lift the the kind of like the little drawer to get mm -hmm. in there and the chickens was just like a sliding gate and it was metal. Yeah. And so it was stainless heavy. steel. Yeah, it was very heavy, very hard, like and heavy secure, duty. right? Cages, yeah. And so one night, um, I want to say in the middle of the night, I want to say maybe like two, I don't know, three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one of my uh, family members used to sleep in one of the bedrooms facing the backyard. And he said that he heard noises in the backyard. Um, and he said that it kind of woke him up and he kind of opened the window a little bit. And he said that he saw like a little tiny creature. He said about, I want to say like two feet that just took off from where the cages were and it just ran off onto kind of like, we had like a driveway that you can get, can, what is it? Like a um, RV? Yeah, RV parking. Like an RV parking area. And that it ran that way, but he said that when it was running, it kind of turned into like it spinned and it turned into like a little fire, like a little yeah, ball. Like just picture Sonic. Yeah, that's what I think in my mind. Oh, like Sonic. Yeah. And so they're like, yeah, it was just weird. And so he said he didn't, he was like, maybe I just imagined something that wasn't there. Maybe it was a car light. Like he was trying to make sense of yeah. it. And at that exact time, there was another family member that was sleeping in another part of the house. And he said he heard so, like some ruckus in the backyard, but he didn't think much of it. He's like, I was scared. I wasn't going to go out there and look. So he just um, brushed it off. The next morning, <clears throat> my dad and my, like everybody was in the backyard. They didn't want us to go back there. They told the kids, you, you guys stay inside the house. Um, and then finally, like, I was like, no, I want to see, I want to go get my bunnies. Is there something going on? And they just, they wanted to keep us away, but we somehow managed to run out there and look to see what was happening. And so we ended up finding all of our animals, all of our bunnies. I think it was a total of like, what, seven bunnies that we had mm -hmm. and maybe like five or six chickens and they were all dead. There was, they were torn apart. Yeah, mutilated. Um, the chickens, there was like chicken pieces everywhere. There was like uh, parts of the bunnies on top of the trees. And these trees were pretty uh, high Yeah, up. there were like pine trees. And so, um, but no drops of blood. It was just um, like pieces and parts and skin. But there was no um, blood anywhere. Yeah, zero not, blood. Not from the chickens um, and not from the, from the bunnies. And so... My parents were, I, I can tell that they were scared. My dad was yeah. afraid. Like, he's like, oh, this is my fault. Like, I called this thing here. And then um, my mom said that they drove, they were driving down the street and they found another chicken. I want to say maybe like a mile or two away from the house. Um, 
and but it was like in the middle of the road yeah. and no blood yeah and so um but i think the ones that were in the cages they were in the cages but they were dead right yeah but there was still no blood and even yeah. in the cages and so yeah our parents and, i mean how did they open it you know like right and our parents told us um this is it it, it was the neighbor's dogs the neighbor's yeah. dogs got in the house and or got in the cages and they ate the animals and they just left it at that um but then i started thinking i was like well wouldn't there be blood mm -hmm. like animals like they're messy yeah dogs are messy and these cages were hard for me to yeah. open i would always have to ask my dad to open it so i can get the bunnies because they were heavy yeah. and so to me it was dogs weird. can't do that yeah, yeah it was scary know? and um i just think about it and i'm like um what could have that could what could it have been yeah and i think you know as you get older and you reminisce on all these experiences it just it doesn't make sense you know so right. i think that's what like and then there are memories that kind of just linger with you you know mm -hmm. and you you just keep remembering them and then you try to make sense of them but they don't make sense right so. yeah and even at that the other thing that kind of now that i'm a grown adult and i think about it even i feel like whatever was there um would hinder on people yeah um because my dad when he when we lived at that house he was very aggressive like very angry all the time as far as like his mood it was always like he would just lash out for no reason sometimes and so i kind of felt as soon as like because my parents eventually they were like you know we're moving we're gonna leave because my mom was just like i'm just tired of being here we gotta go somewhere else as soon as we moved we saw a change like right away like different people like um and then you know we we moved into a different house and then that's another story on that house um i feel like it kind of follows us <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean and and we i mean there's always been i'm sure that other family members had encounters yeah, there that I, they I agree to that they know about and they haven't really told us yet i mean we're now fi finding out about some of them that would tell us yeah. that they had experiences there and that they were scared they would hear noises um they they would see things and so to us i mean we never really got to investigate because yeah it never at that time we didn't know how to we yeah. were kids and even now we haven't really go i've tried to look for things but mm -hmm. i haven't found anything on that home yeah um but i think like it would explain the constant selling and reselling of that home mm -hmm. you know and just overall the vibe was heavy for yes. that house yeah it was heavy you did not want to be alone you didn't even want to be there. And I always, like, every time I would go up back into the backyard, I would feel like there was something following me. And I would feel scared. Like, I can yeah, feel it. You, it would, <laughs> yeah, you would feel like there was something watching you. And it was just automatic fear. Like, I'm just scared. Like, you can't think of any other thing, you know, other yeah. than to leave the home. Or even, I don't know, like, it's just... Scary. Yeah. yeah yeah and then a lot of things happened within the family around that time mm -hmm. so i think it was just too, a lot and so eventually yeah we moved out and um thankfully that you know we left that house <laughs> um but yeah that's that's our story, that's that part of the story. there's a lot here i mean there's a lot of different versions of the, not, not not version of the story but what i mean is is when a lot of people talk about haunting usually one thing happens like you saw you saw a little boy jumping on the bed to animals being torn apart i mean there's a there's a that lot and i agree with you that <laughs> it is harder to research older homes when especially like you're talking about because i know california i grew up in california not a lot of mm -hmm. things that are reported a lot of things that has happened goes under the table where i used to live i, I saw a man stab another person because they were cheating on the wife and I, and to this day there was never cops ever called in that's just wow. you know the neighborhoods that you live in that people kept things more quiet so yeah. it would make sense that it's hard to try to find was there a boy murder there was there a record of it yeah because a lot of people don't understand is when you buy a house 
Like I bought a house that they actually made meth in the garage and the neighbor was a cop. Now they right. have to tell me that, but once you buy the house, you don't have to tell the next person. It's a weird kind of a rule. So there's so many things that happen in houses you just don't know about. But let's start with the, this little boy you saw jumping on the bed. I mean, you saw a little boy jumping on the bed, but but was there any evil feeling when you saw the little boy jumping on the bed? Or was it just like, okay, a boy's jumping on the bed. A ghost is just, you know, wasn't harmful. You need to feel that. Did it look, was it see-through, or did it look like a solid figure, the little boy? I honestly don't recall, but I think, like, based on my reaction, I don't think I had a good feeling about him. Yeah, because she, as soon as she saw him, she just closed the door on it, and she was like, I don't want to play with you, and she just closed the door. Um, And then it didn't hit me until after she did that. Uh, and then we opened the door and tried to look on the bed to see if maybe there was something like the, the bed was disturbed or something, but we didn't see anything. So, wow. yeah, but did we got parents, scared. Did your parents well, ever see that little boy in the house? I don't know if my parents. Yeah, I don't know. It. We had an uncle that would see it often. Oh, really? Yes. He would uh, see. He would always tell me he, I see him in that exact same room, like through the kitchen and he would run into that room where she saw him. Wow. So it's not necessarily, it might not have been evil at all. It's just, it's your first time as kids yeah, seeing I something did. that's not supposed to be there. Yeah. I right. mean, if I saw something it's not supposed to be there, I'd probably freak out a little bit at first too. Yeah. Especially when you're young, you're, you know, you're not exposed to it, you know, and all that. Do you know if the boy did it, had any words maybe any chance like what did it ever try to speak or was it just more physical more just jumping up and down you never heard any kind of voices from it sounds or words i don't i'm I'm thinking because she she had told me that he wanted to play with her i don't know if if he said something to her or he was just kind of like waving yeah um but as far as like my uncle he said he didn't talk it was just a shadow that would run and it was yeah. always in within that area where the bathroom that bathroom that she got locked mm-hmm. in and that room it was just mostly within that area where, where it would be seen and this now, is the house where your dad was like in a bad mood usually you know yes that house. yeah right. mm-hmm. now now did this uh little boy ghost like you said your dad saw and all that was this way years before that the, the animals stuff that you're seeing yes. was that like much later yes you know, because, because the animal i'm sorry no 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 i, I was just curious because oh. what i've learned what i've learned is some ghosts wants attention and if they don't mm-hmm. get that attention sooner or later they're gonna start to get more aggressive and i'm just wondering if this boy maybe it wasn't even a boy it was just disguised himself as a boy got mad that you two weren't paying attention wouldn't play with it later on in life it's went went after the animals yeah um yeah because with with the little boy she was a babe she was a toddler when that happened um with the animals thing how old were you were you a little bit older i think i was like in middle school and she was was kind of shortly before we moved right yeah um and so uh but i to me i have a feeling that it was a total separate incident it wasn't i don't think it was the same thing yeah i have to say i I just have a feeling i love the fact that your father was all into the chupacabra and everything oh yeah my dad's my dad's the one that got us into bigfoot and oh that's great (laughs) yeah he's always he's a hunter he would always go out hunting and he's like you know that there's a sasquatch out there and Oh, that's so, so yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, then, I like you that already. <laughs> then, what gave you that feeling that they weren't related? I mean, what what make making you think that? You know, I think because it, it, it was never that aggressive. Like the the kid, I never encountered it myself personally. Um, my sister, my older sister, and and Eileen did, um, and my uncle, but. I felt like that other incident to me, I don't know, for some reason, it, it kind of was more personal, like 
because even with that, I would always, like I've told um, Anthony in the past, I've ha I would have reoccurring dreams of that area where the animals were taken. And it was a, like, I, in my dream, it was like an alien standing there and he would point at something. And when I would turn and look at it, like there was nothing there and I would wake up. And this was a reoccurring dream. Um, and so I don't know if maybe it was just traumatic to me since, you know, I was young and I saw these animals torn apart, but it was in that area where that alien would just stand there and in my dreams. I think she yeah. had a I think it was demonic, whatever it was, because it appeared as as a child, right? It went for your sister, mm -hmm. the youngest in the house at the time. And mm -hmm. then you were having reoccurring dreams, alien, whatever, but same house still. So it was yes. those, those images in your mind while you were sleeping. I think it was something demonic that needed to suck off their energy mm -hmm. somehow to, to stay around. You know, yeah. and just weren't giving it to them. Well, when you notice that the animals were getting torn apart, you're very smart to say, it can't be a dog. Where's all the blood? You're right. Where Where is all the yeah. blood? Dogs aren't the cleanest things in the world. But when you saw that, did you notice that you said when you're in this house, like your dad got a little more angry, was he getting angrier when the animal stuff was happening versus the, the, the boy? No, I think... Um... I think it just because when we first moved in there, he was, you know, fine. And it just gradually started getting worse. Um, and then I think at that point when the whole animal thing happened, uh, it kind of it snapped them like, OK, like Not there's something enough. up. Yeah. Yeah. We got it. We got to go. And um, I think that kind of opened his eyes a little bit to something else happening around the house. He didn't want to talk to us about it because we were kids. But now, like, we talk about it, and he's like, yeah, you know, it was really weird. Um, good thing we left. And so... That's why I think it was demonic, because yeah. her, her dad was being oppressed by it. You know, it kept I, him in I energy. think so, to she be honest with you. She was dreams. The, you know, as a child, she was witnessing the ghosts on the bed. I, I think all those interactions, they all remind me of something that's demonic, sucking the life energy out of the family, you know? That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with Anthony. If you listen to all the stories, this is why we do this. Regular ghost stories, you don't really hear the anger part. But the only time you start hearing the anger part is when a possession kind of is happening, more demonic, more evil mm -hmm. type of stuff. So I am, I, I agree. Now, yeah, because now, of course, like... Of course, oh, sorry. Now, you said something very interesting. You know, <laughs> even when you left the house, when you move into other houses, I want to know between the other house you moved to and your house yet now, you think maybe this thing is following and it's not connected with that house? Hmm. I don't know. Cause, and that was the reason, that was one of the things my mom said when we moved, she's like, we're leaving that house. This house better not be haunted, right? Hmm. She's like, I don't want to take nothing. Like we're good. And so when we bought this or she, they bought this other house, we ended up finding out that there was a murder in that house oh, and it was a very um, graphic uh very brutal murder and so um my mom was just upset when she found out and the reason yeah. we found out was because i worked with a person that knew the the person that murdered the man yeah so he um he told me he's like look this up look this name up they online. didn't expose that to your parents when they bought the house no <laughs> Wow. Because the murder happened, what was it, in, in the, the 70s? Yeah, yeah they don't have, have little, to. Only, have the, only the previous owner of the murder has to, they have to tell you. The, yeah. What they but, do, um, that's it. What was the name of the deceased? Does it tell you who the person that yeah, was? Yeah, it was, involved? his name was Ed. Ed. Ed Peel was his name. Peel. And he, and he told me that. He's like, look up this name. It happened in your house. And so I was like, no way. I looked it up. Sure enough, there was a picture of our house. Oh and there was yellow tape around it and i showed it to my mom my mom was really upset she's like i moved from one house to move into another house that has activity she's like let's sell it we put what it up for sale feel like what did that feel like when you found out there was a murder in the house it kind of you know what my dad was like relieved because he was like no wonder there's stuff yeah. been happening to me because uh -huh. there, there was kind of put two and two together there yes yeah but yeah i felt thing. like I have not heard at all with all these places you've been to. I never I haven't heard 
you guys try to get a priest to bless no, we it did. or say <laughs> oh, really? did. yes we so got a priest did. twice okay. Here we yes. go. So yeah. you have tried to get the house blessed or yes. saved or whatever. And uh -huh. after, okay, after the first time you had somebody bless the house, did it change? I think it, it helped. Yeah, um, the activity diminished a bit. Okay. But then um, it did spike back up. Um, and at that moment, we found out about what had happened because I felt like they they would kind of see some activity and they didn't, you know, they would brush it off because they didn't know about what happened, right? So they didn't really, they're just so, like, oh. and And here's one of the, the crazy things that we were, my dad was remodeling one of the rooms oh boy. and he took out the carpet and there was a big red stain on the floor. What and happened my dad when you remodeled? Did activity pick up? I think so. Yeah. I think that's when it started to yeah. pick up. And um, my dad was oh, like, I was what? like, what? I looked at it and I told him, Dad, what is that? And he's like, Oh, it, I think somebody dropped wine, and, and it was a lot <laughs> yeah. of wine. It was a lot of wine, lot. and yeah. um, he just he he's like, whatever, because it was. But at that time, we didn't know that a murder had happened in the house. Yeah, we didn't know, and and the thing was, they had like the, you know, uh, just a carpet from the two thousands, and when we removed that, it had the original nineteen seventies carpet, which had the huge stain, and when we removed that, the whole cement area was stained. stained. Yeah. yeah, that's not wine. That was probably yeah. Wine. Yeah. Well, what's it like yeah. now? I mean, where are you living at now? Are you both living in the same house now, or you live separately? We live separate. She still lives in that house. Cause okay. see, and that's the thing. When my mom found out that the house, there was a murder, she tried to sell it. And for some reason she couldn't, we couldn't sell it. Like we wouldn't, we would get buyers and then they would drop off for some reason. And so um, they just ended up keeping it. They're like, you know what, whatever. We're, we're gonna get the priest to come in, bless the house. Um, and then that kind of helped. And so, um, but I think we got a priest twice. And yeah. then we got um we did a mass for him like we yeah. we said you know let's uh, maybe he needs help yeah he needs to over. move on over. that yeah. that I was gonna get to that point too did yeah. you know, I was gonna ask you did you think maybe he he never got to cross over because of all the anger and everything you know sometimes these souls are trapped here because they didn't get to finish living their life the way they were supposed to it was cut short so they feel like they have things to finish here in in, in our realm you know the the and, alive world. And I just want to say, I know that uh, some people are going to ask, you know, what, how it happened. Um, we ended up finding out that he, it was like a murder for, um, what was it, for murder money? For, for murder, no. She, so he had an insurance, life murder insurance. Murder for hire, they call that. Yeah. He, they hired someone to murder him to get his life insurance. Murder for hire. So the twist is that the mom brainwashed the children and the son ended up murdering his father. And he wow. shot him, I believe it was like seven, six times with a shotgun. With a shotgun. And um, he was sitting in the recliner and yeah. he just came up and shot him. And cut a, um, a, couple, t cut a, a couple shots with a shotgun, take it, pull you, mm -mm. you know, he, in half. Yeah, what a shame. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really tragic and really sad. And this is one of the reasons why we decided to do a mass for him because we're like, you know, yeah. it, it, it ended really fast for him and he probably doesn't know because my parents right. would get the feeling that yeah. he didn't know he was dead. Because, because of would, like what he would do when he was at the house, like yeah. he, he would uh, at a certain time would go to his bedroom every single night and open their door mm -hmm. and he, he would hang out in the dining table. He would just sit on a certain chair all the time and my grandpa was the one who would see him every single day right like he would every morning he's like who's that man over there he's living and, out of routine he's like you know like nothing yeah. right yeah and um he would hang out too in that living room where he passed away my sister would see him there yeah, That's yeah. Amazing. now before i go to uh my final thoughts i'll ask you both you know one last thing what you've been through what you have learned, what you have studied, you know, to this point, if somebody else is going through the same thing you guys gone through growing up and all that, what kind of advice or would you tell them what they should do, you know, with your experience that you know now? 
um, <laughs> move. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I think I would tell somebody get a priest because that to us help. Yeah. Get some get some help, um, and make sure you're good spiritually. You know, protect yourself because you never know what it could be. Um, like like Eric said, it could be something evil. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would say that be spiritually ready because we're always in a spiritual war, right? And so we need to be ready for that and we need to get help sometimes. And so, yeah, yeah. that would be I my... I agree, yeah. <laughs> that would be I, my I'll advice. make sure that everybody gets your phone number, your address. So <laughs> we don't do... We don't, no, we don't do none of that. But, you know, here's the advice. <laughs> you know, you guys can start your own little Ghostbusters group. And, yeah, you, you know, can have you can for your living room. Yeah, I'll so. carry the you know backpack. That. <laughs> well, I want to appreciate you both coming up here and, and telling us the story and all that because it, it you'd be surprised. It might help some people. You know, somebody yeah. hear the same thing. You know, might, you might be the ones who trigger them to maybe get a priest to bless their house and all that. So, um, Anthony, before I do my final thoughts, you want you got any more questions you want to ask? I, I just wanted to give you one piece of advice that I learned that works. Um, if you get St. Michael pendant, and Padre Pio, you're gonna get two of each. So two, four, six, eight, you're gonna need eight pendants. And all four corners of the house, you get them blessed and you, you bury them literally in all four corners of the outside of the house. And usually that, that creates like a, a, a barrier around the home to keep evil spirits out. Now that's just a Catholic religion thing. I don't know if you're Catholic or what you are, yeah. but it helps usually. Yeah. So maybe that could be one source of protection that you could try and saging always helps to cleanse the house too. But you know, yeah. if that doesn't work, you know, you got to go to the professionals and right. have to clear that, you know, cause you don't want to live like that with something that no. they, the house is still there. Yeah. You want to clear them out. But thank you for telling your story. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah right. you're welcome. I'll thank give you. my final thoughts and I'll be backstage in a second. Wow. What a story. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I was ex expecting maybe like seeing a, the little boy jumping and all that, you know, I'd be ex expecting that story, but to hear about a boy jumping on the bed, you hear about animals being slaughtered with no blood in sight, in, 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 no blood anywhere. I mean, and then of course having a haunting by the bathroom and everybody's getting hurt by it of all places. Why do you got to haunt the bathroom the most? That's where you got to go do your business. What? You know, and people getting hurt outside the bathroom? That's not cool. That's not... <laughs> I'm not trying to joke around, but that's not cool to, to haunt a bathroom. Go somewhere else to haunt. But but that's, that's... But what you learn is... But also, be on the serious side, what you learn is... What you learn from them is getting, getting the house blessed did help. You know, I'm not saying I'm I'm not a professional, you know, and, and I'm not saying a, a, a priest and all that will guarantee to clean the house, but you heard it from several people. It does help. A sage does help, and you just learned from Anthony about about what he just said to do. You know, these two items. I forgot. I already forgot the names. I don't want to mess it up. Maybe I'll have uh, uh, Anthony put in a description for me or something <laughs> you know plant it in all four corners maybe that would help you know so i hope these stories are literally actually helping if you're running to that situation because it's pretty scary to know that you know she experienced it as a toddler you know seeing a boy what was that due to a kid and all that so there's a lot of things here and the mood change I've heard that in so many demonic stories that people moods change when they're in the house and then when they leave the house they feel good. How many times have you heard that where the person feels horrible in the house but as soon as they leave it's like this big thing lifted and does ghosts follow? In their case it's kind of hard to determine if there was an attachment because the house they moved into had a murder so i mean it's talk about the bad luck of the draw but overall i hope we're all learning something and i hope that if you guys get a chance uh subscribe to casual conversation with ga their channel is fantastic they're a lot like us 
where they talk about different topics, not just the paranormal. They, they will talk about the paranormal. They will talk about the UFOs. They will talk about, about the Bigfoot. And what's also encouraging for me is their age. Being young and being and not being afraid of what the public's going to say. Not being afraid of what anybody talks about. They're brave to even do a channel and bring this stuff out. Not just telling us their story. They have their own channel that they can talk about this. Being brave like that, to me, means a lot. And I really appreciate that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, interview. And um, kick back. Get some popcorn, get some soda, because we're always on that paranormal highway. We're always on that road. We're always searching. Together, all of us together, we will find the truth to what we're looking for. So, guys, I hope I see you next time on the Paranormal Highway.